Good evening, this is V and I've just finished reading Haunted Ever After by Jen DeLuca. As you can probably tell from the title, this is another uh, romance story that involves ghosts. Although unlike the dead romantics, the ghosts feature more prominently in the setting of this story as opposed to the actual relationship. So there are two main characters. Cassie is originally from Orlando, but like she's uh, been feeling increasingly disconnected from her original friend circle because all her friends are now at the age where like they're married and have kids and it's all about being parents. And she, uh, she herself like both doesn't have a relationship and doesn't have children. And she feels a bit like she's more and more getting excluded from um, all of their lives. So in order to try to get like a change of pace, she decides to buy a new home in a small coastal town in Florida called Boneyard Keys. So this is somewhat of an unusual town. In order to compete with Florida's theme parks like Disney and so on, the town has sort of um, really focused on its ghost-related tourism industry because it's always been kind of a haunted sort of place. Like ever since this major hurricane in its history, it's had a really uh, colorful background, I guess, when it comes to hauntings. Like it has 15 different original families from that time period with pretty long roots in this town and all of which have some uh, gifts, I guess, related to ghosts being able to interact with them, sense them, and otherwise um, deal with the dead. Of course, tourists don't actually know this, like, you know, people think it's all made up, but the locals know better. And this includes um, the other main character, Nick, who is the owner of a coffee shop called uh, Hollowed Grounds. <laughs> so, um, well, yeah, he runs this coffee shop and he shares it with the ghost of its former owner. Like the person has uh, basically been haunting the shop since his death several owners previously and has driven away like all the intervening people because they haven't been able to deal with his micromanaging from beyond the grave. Uh, anyways, this story follows Nick and Cassie as they get to know each other and well, start to try to build a relationship within the context of this somewhat ghostly sort of town, but also a fun sort of place as, you know, Cassie sort of learns and tries to cope with uh, the strange things that happen here and to try to figure out whether this is a place uh, where she would actually want to continue living. So something I liked. This is definitely the fun kind of ghost story. I mean, it's not to say it doesn't have any bad ghosts, but I like how um, what the person who does like the walking ghost tours said, where she points out that ghosts are really just people, you know, people with different personalities and different quirks, like they might be dead and all, but they were still people. So you have like harmless ones, you know, good ones, bad ones, but for the most part in this town, like, they encourage the good ones to stay and the bad ones to go. And you have, you know, for instance, I find it really funny how Nick's always getting these text messages from the previous owner commenting on, like, his love life and his management of the store and, like, his baking, like, he complains whenever Nick makes changes to, like, his banana bread recipe. So things like that, which I think are uh, definitely more fun than they are creepy, and I enjoy that. So something that I might have liked differently, I guess for me, I find the pacing of the romance line um, really fast. Like I tend to prefer romance lines that build up a lot more slowly, but on the whole, like that's not really a huge issue. I also think it's a little weird though how... Uh, Considering where they live, like the fact that you can, you know, main characters like, oh, she can make an appointment with ghost hunters, like first thing in the morning and try to figure out the weirdness that's going on in her own house. Oh yeah, because Cassie 
um, lives, you know, the house where she lives is actually one that hasn't been lived in for a really, really long time and has its own somewhat weird reputation in the town. So part of the story includes the weird things that have happened to Cassie since she moved in and then all of them uh, working together to try to figure out what's going on. For instance, the fact that her laptop won't charge even though there seems to be nothing wrong with the electricity but anyways considering where they live is a little weird to me how slow the characters were on the uptake of the reasons behind some of the problems that they had